Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. We're developing a concentration here. And concentration is the basis for discernment. Because you want to see something clearly, you have to be very still first. And if you want to let go of things, you have to have a sense of well-being. This is what the concentration provides, both stillness and well-being. But it takes work. That's what the mindfulness is for. Mindfulness looks after what's going on and reminds you what you're doing, what you want to be doing, so you don't forget. Otherwise, if you forget, you go wandering off and thinking about tomorrow or what you're going to do when you leave here or what you did yesterday, all of which doesn't accomplish anything. What you're trying to do is develop good qualities in the mind. There's the quality of conviction, which is conviction in the fact that your actions are going to make a big difference in your life, so you better get your mind well trained, because the mind is the source of all your actions. Then there's persistence. You really stick with your determination to do things well, do them skillfully. That requires mindfulness, keeping things in mind, and the concentration and discernment. To get the mind still and allow you to see where you're holding on to things that are causing suffering and what you might do to let go. So we're developing all kinds of what the Buddha calls strengths in the mind, or what he also calls faculties. In other words, fac qualities of mind that should be in charge. Otherwise, our greed, aversion, and delusion are in charge. Our forgetfulness gets in charge. Our confusion gets in charge. So who do you want to have in charge inside your mind? You've got the choice. So make the choice well. Try to choose the wise qualities, the skillful qualities. When they're in charge, okay, then everything else goes well. It's like you have a company. The president of the company is the one who establishes the, the policy for the company. And if the president is corrupt, or if the president is lazy, or the president is forgetful, then everything just goes to pieces. Or if the president has wrong view, then things are, start off really poorly. Or if the president has right view but doesn't carry through, okay, then no matter how good the pre president's intentions, the workers don't really feel then any need to follow through. So you want to put the good qualities in charge and make sure that they're mindful and really are taking care of things. So look carefully after your mind, because that's the source of all things, and the mind is should what should be in control. Not just your impulses or your old habits, but your awareness right now of what should and shouldn't be done. That should be in control of what you're doing. So try to change the balance of power in your mind if it's not good yet. If it is already good, we'll try to strengthen it. Because ultimately it is your life and it's your choice of what you're going to do with their life. The Buddha gives examples, the Buddha gives instructions. He's there for everybody to see and to follow. And the question is, are you going to take advantage of the fact that his teachings are still remembered, his examples are still remembered? Because it's not going to be here all the time. As he himself said, the teachings were going to die out at some point. Well, make sure they don't die out for you at least. If you practice them, then you carry them through to the next generation. You benefit, and the people after you benefit as well. <laughs>